Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we're going to check out something that is really cool, something we've never taken a look at before, and that would be one of the Creative Beast Studios resin models. Now, if you do not know who Creative Beast Studio is, you'll know here in a second, Creative Beast Studio is David Silva, who is responsible for the entire Beasts of the Mesozoic line, and he also has some really awesome resin dinosaur kits and actually dragon kits that he had released prior to the Beasts of the Mesozoic line. And I had always wanted to get a hold of some, but, you know, I just didn't ever have the money to grab any. I always had other things that I was trying to get a hold of. But not long ago, one popped up on eBay and it was selling for, like, really cheap. So I scooped it up. The only problem was that the base did not come with the model it was just the dinosaur so i had to go ahead and find myself a new base and i went ahead and found myself a fossil actually so to replace the base that originally comes with this model i went ahead and went up into the mountains here behind me and searched out a pretty nice fossil as we have a lot of fossils up here as far as like ferns and everything like that so i figured it would be a pretty cool way to display the model if i didn't have the original base but this is actually the Mashikasaurus, and again, it's my very first resin model from the Creative Beast Studio line, so I was really psyched about it. I went ahead and painted it up. It actually had already been assembled when I purchased it, so it came already built. I just painted it up, which made my life a little easier, I guess. And I must say that it is an absolutely gorgeous interpretation of a Mashikasaurus, definitely the best that I have in my collection, and in the original images that I had seen of it, you know, showing off the images of the base that you actually would get with the model if you purchased it. It's kind of a Mashikasaurus on the top of a, I don't know if you'd call it a mountain ledge or like a hill or what exactly, but it's up pretty high and uh, it's just kind of looking over. So I sort of replicated that here with this, but it doesn't look quite as cool, I would say, as what you would actually get if you purchased this model from Creative Beast Studios' website with the original base. But anyway, I'm very excited to show this up close to you guys, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Mushikasaurus, you can see some absolutely incredible looking skin detail here as far as like the scale detail. You can see a lot of different varying sizes of scales as well whether it's on the upper jaw, the lower jaw, even over in the eye socket area. The skin texture and scale detail looks different pretty much everywhere you look, which looks really neat. Like you can see right there in the eye socket area, it's some very nice fine texturing and scaling. But then as you lead out into the palette, you can see some larger scales picking up. And then down there in the lower jaw, it's like some medium-sized scales. So there is just a lot of difference as far as the texturing and scaling to the figure goes you can also see almost like some osteoderm like scales leading up over the eyebrow area the nostrils are sculpted out very nicely and of course as far as a mushikasaurus goes the trademark would probably be the way that the teeth look and i think that the figure here from creative beast studio is beautifully done as far as that aspect goes the mouth is partially open but not open very much just a little bit seems like maybe he was just about to let out a vocalization or maybe he was in the process of a yawn who knows exactly but the mouth is slightly open just not super far you can see in there a little bit but not too much but the teeth again do look pretty nice very wild looking teeth like you would expect to see on the dinosaur you also have kind of like some hanging skin here to the underside and sort of like some little ridges that run along that area and then up here on the top of the head you can also see some more incredibly beautiful looking skin detail some beautiful scale detail throughout the entire course of the upper side of the head as you move back into the neck you could see some more really nice scale detail as well as a lot of creasing as you run down the course of the neck you could see like some nice tensing in the neck as well the dinosaur has its head turned to the right not super far but definitely has a pretty good turn to the neck you can also see that we have some ridges that pick up and run down along the spinal column of the dinosaur as you move down here into the underside, you can see that the detailing down here looks fantastic as well. Really nice detailing here as far as showing off the throat running down the underside of the dinosaur. Moving down into the body, you can see the shoulder blade picking up right there, kind of protruding from the skin a little bit. The skin texture and scale detail continues to look phenomenal no matter where you go. It looks really, really highly detailed, and there's some very nice vibrant detailing to the model, which really makes it easy to apply like washes and dry brushing and things like that to make the paint job just have more depth to it and make the skin 
texture and scaling really pop as far as the paintwork goes. As you move down here into the arm, you can see some nice muscle definition in the arm as well as the elbow present back there. The hands are also nicely sculpted, kind of like a scoot-like appearance. Down the course of the fingers, we also have the nails, which are beautifully sculpted as well. You can see very small but really nicely detailed. Even the undersides, like the palms of the hands and everything, are very nicely sculpted. You can see some skin wrinkles here, right below the arm, a little bit, a very, very small hint of those. You can also see the dinosaur is really quite thin, like really, really thin, so maybe that's what he's doing up there on the top of that mountain. Maybe he's scoping it out looking for a meal, but the actual detailing here in the stomach region, again, is phenomenal as far as the skin texture goes. Like, that scale detail looks great, and you can see as you reach up here to the top, you have kind of like a bunch of creases running down the spinal column, a little bit of a different look as far as the scaling goes up here. You can also see the ridges kind of taper off from those larger ones up there on the back of the neck they taper off to a more fine ridge line that runs along the spinal column but then they start to pick back up again as you get closer to the hip region you can see they become fairly large right there the hip region is very nicely sculpted as you can see the hip bone there protruding from the skin a little bit and then some very nice muscle definition moving down the thigh down into the calf as well and you can continue to see how incredible that scale detail looks no matter where you go it is just fantastic there's some nice creasing here in the joint of the knee the kneecap itself is present there on the front of the leg and you can see how the dinosaur is just kind of perched up here on the mountainous area or hill-like area the foot is kind of bending down very bird-like as far as the appearance to the foot but you can also see that that foot sculpt looks incredible detail wise again kind of like a scoot like appearance down the course of the toes as well as some very nicely sculpted out nails and we do have dew claws over here as well and then leading back up here into the tail you can see some skin stretching right there kind of like some skin folds and stuff as the leg is pulling forward stretching that skin and then you move out the length of the tail and again the actual detailing is just incredible no matter where you look this is absolutely as highly detailed as it gets and you have a very nice curve to the tail you can see a beautiful looking curve nothing that is even remotely unrealistic and you can see how the ridges again they're larger there in the hip region they taper off to a very small ridge line running down before you reach the tip of the tail and you have a little increase in size there again before tapering off completely and then taking a look here at the other side of the head, again, you can see how absolutely gorgeous the sculpt is of the head of this Mashikasaurus. Really beautiful work on the part of David Silva and Creative Beast Studio. And you can see as we move back here into the neck, again, pretty much the same type of an appearance. Gorgeous looking scale detail, those ridges running along the top of the head right there. And again, the dinosaur has its head turned away from us this time, but not that far. So you can see some stretching in the skin, but it's not anything dramatic or anything like that. You can again see the underside looks fantastic detail wise. And then as we move back here into the body, you can pick up on the shoulder blade a little bit. Again, they're protruding from the skin. You can see the arm here is in a different position than the arm on the right side. The arm here is held back closer to the body a little bit more so as the other arm there is kind of extending. And you can also see again the really nice detail, the nice muscle definition moving up the course of the arm, as well as again that really nice hand sculpt right there with the very nicely sculpted out nails. And then moving back up here into the stomach, you can again see kind of like some skin folds and skin wrinkles, a little bit of skin stretching here as the leg is pulling back, stretching the skin off of the stomach. You can see more really nice scale detail there in the stomach region leading up here into the back. Again, a little bit of a rougher looking scaling running along the spinal column in the upper area, the upper back of the dinosaur. You can again see the hip bone over here protruding from the skin as well as some more really nice muscle definition moving down the course of the thigh down into the calf. The calf is really quite a big bulging calf muscle right there like you can really see how muscular the legs are of the dinosaur. The kneecap again is present right there and then moving down into the foot you can again see the slightly crouched positioning of the Mashikasaurus as again it's standing up on sort of a ledge but you can also see again the very bird-like appearance to the foot over here as well with some really nicely sculpted out toes and nails again a scoot like appearance down the toes and you also have the dew claw back there and then as we move up here you can again see a little bit of like some skin folding and skin wrinkling right here showing off yet again the movement of the thigh and then you move out the length of the tail and all of the detailing looks absolutely gorgeous as you run along that really nice curve in the tail and you can also see the underside sports some really nice detailing there are holes there for what i'd imagine were the pegs to hold the dinosaur onto the base but again we don't have the base so unfortunately those pegs 
egg holes are useless to me. We do have the cloaca there on the underside of the dinosaur as well as a lot of skin wrinkles and skin movement running the course of the underside of the dinosaur. But that just shows off again how incredibly highly detailed this Mushikasaurus is from every angle. So an incredibly nice looking Mushikasaurus model and easily the best that I have in my collection. And although the base here isn't the original base, of course, that came with the dinosaur, the base is just now a fossil, a big rock, but I just figured I'd bring it up to show you guys again some of the fossils that are on it, as we have a lot of, like, ferns and stuff that are pretty abundant throughout the course of this. So I figured, what more of a perfect way to display a dinosaur model than with an actual fossil itself? So I figured it was a perfect replacement, even though the original base would probably have been much nicer. Another aspect of the model that is actually really cool is just how good the balance is of it. You can see here that even without a base, just nothing other than it touching its foot on one side and the tip of the nail on the other side, it holds the dinosaur up and it actually stands pretty nicely like this. And what's nice about that is you don't even have to glue the dinosaur onto the base. It stands actually pretty darn nicely on the base, which is pretty impressive, again, considering it's not the original base, it's just the fossil, so that's pretty darn cool as well. And to show you an idea, roughly, of the size, we're going to get a measurement. We'll place the dinosaur back down here, again, standing on his tippy toes right there. So for a length on the Mushikasaurus, you're looking at about the, I would say about nine and a half inch range or about 24 centimeters. And then for a height, of course, when it's standing here by itself, you're looking at just under four and three quarter inches or 12 centimeters. This would obviously be drastically different if you had the original base and you had the dinosaur up on the base. The size would be quite different. But for a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon in comparison to our. Creative Beast Studio Mashikasaurus, and you can see roughly again what the size of the model is here in comparison to these figures showing off that although it's not huge, it's definitely not small either. As far as the Mashikasaurus goes, I feel like it's a pretty darn good size. And then for a second size comparison, one of the most popular, I would think, beasts of the Mesozoic figures, we have the Zuni Ceratops here in comparison to the Mashikasaurus, again showing off the fact that it's fairly small as this is the smallest of the beasts of the Mesozoic figures, but I feel like, again, with the addition of the original base, the overall size would be far more impressive. But as far as a Mashikasaurus goes, yet again, I think that this should help to show you that size-wise, it is definitely a... I would say perfect size, honestly, for the species. So they have done a great job, not only on the detailing aspect of the model, but in the size aspect as well. And just because he's been making so many appearances lately in our review comparisons, here is the Collect Day Dimetrodon in comparison to the Creative Beast Studio Mashikasaurus. And then for yet another comparison, there is the Mattel Mashikasaurus in comparison to the Creative Beast Studio version. So hopefully, again, if you have any of the figures that we have just shown off, you'll have a pretty good idea roughly of the size of this model. If not, you can trust my word in telling you that it's a medium kind of approaching large, I would say. So this Creative Beast Studio Mashikasaurus is an absolutely gorgeous looking model. Again, easily the best interpretation I have of this species in my collection and having this model from them showing off how incredible and beautiful the sculpt is really makes me want more of their resin models as I know they have quite a few more they have an incredible looking Dimetrodon that I have wanted for years as well as a really nice Dilophosaurus and quite a bit more there are definitely like an Acrocanthosaurus there's a ton of really nice models that Creative Beast Studio had produced prior to the Beasts of the Mesozoic line being introduced, and this is again just a very small sampling of what they have to offer. And I'm a big fan of resin models because I feel like the dinosaurs just look so lifelike and incredible, but it's also just a fun process to build and paint up a dinosaur in your own vision, kind of make it look however you would like it to look. It's an absolute blast, and if you have not done this yet, trust me, you really need to give it a shot. Even if your painting skills aren't all that great, if you're new to painting, it's a great way to learn by actually just going and doing it. Because that's how I learned to build models, and that's how I learned to paint models, was just by doing it. I didn't ever have any tutorials or watch any videos to teach me how to do it. I just started trying, and then learning from my mistakes as time went on. But again, maybe you could try painting some 
Mattel figures or some cheap dinosaurs or something a few times prior to your model actually arriving and then you'll have a pretty good idea of what you're doing hopefully by the time it comes but no matter what I think with how highly detailed and beautiful this sculpt is you can't go wrong even if your paint isn't that great if you're new to painting it's still going to look good because the model is so beautifully sculpted it'll practically paint itself it absolutely is as highly detailed as it gets when it comes to a dinosaur model sporting every ounce of incredible skin texture scaling really nice skin folds, skin wrinkles, skin stretching, everything that you would expect to see. It's all incredibly well done on the model. And again, with detail as nice as this, it was so easy to paint this one up. It just pops so nicely once some paint is applied and shows off how incredible the sculpt itself actually is. Of course, it would probably have looked nicer if we had the original base, but with the cheap deal that I was able to get on this, again, I wasn't complaining about the lack of the base. And with this fossil that I've been able to acquire over here and kind of place the dinosaur on to become its new base, I feel like it's a pretty perfect companion piece to the model. But of course, the original base would have looked nicer with the overall final product. And now actually having this here, I definitely am very much so inclined to acquire more of the Creative Beast Studio resin kits in the future. So maybe at some point I can go ahead, head on over to their website, place an order and get some more of their kits to get up here on the channel and of course add to my collection and actually have the original base and everything with it, which would definitely be a plus. But I can't recommend the model kit that you see before you enough so make sure that if you are interested in this you head to the link in the description as i will include a link straight to the listing on the creative beast studio website where you can purchase this mashikasaurus for yourself and add this incredible model to your collection with the original base so make sure you check that link make sure you head on over there and order this incredible model and make sure you also like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching